Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called We're Doomed. It is by Breaking Games. It plays four to 10 players and it takes 15 minutes to play exactly. And I mean exactly, I mean there's an hourglass in the game that shows you how long you have until you're doomed. In the game We're Doomed, basically the world has uh, undergone some serious problems and there's only a certain amount of time left before it is going to explode. You are going to need to escape along with everybody else. And everybody's gonna have their own unique specific type of crassy, democracy, tenocracy, so on and so forth. And you're basically going to be trying to gather resources, gather influence, draw cards, and do other things to uh, basically put into a project. If at the end of the game, the last 15 minutes of the game, when the timer is over, you have enough resources to get everybody out, you win and everyone escapes. However, if there's not enough resources, only a certain amount of people will escape. And depending on the number of players is how many resources you need. Trying to work together as much as possible, unless you're afraid you're not going to make it on the ship because the main important thing in the game is if you don't have enough influence and there's only a certain amount of seats left you're not going to actually get on board which means you will lose so will you cut throat your opponents and or your cooperative allies or will you work together to do your best you can to possibly put resources in there to win will you all win or all lose or just some of you let's find out i'll show you the game we're doomed and then i'll show you how to play so here we have the game We're Doomed and everything that's going to be included in it. And as you can see, there's quite a bit. And you're, all, uh, you're also going to be using the box here. This box is going to house the game. It's going to house the uh, timer, which is actually going to go into here. And additionally, it's going to have a project area. This is the project area, which you're going to be putting down resources as you place them in the box that is going to help you progress throughout the game. Uh, additionally, you're going to be getting this first player or starting round token for the player who starts the round off is going to just be double-sided here because it can be used throughout the game with the event cards. You're also going to be getting character boards, which you'll be using here, and you'll be placing these little... Uh little standees up to house them and that shows you your special ability on the card additionally it shows you what it what it can do basically for everybody else to see and the type of um democracy te technocracy any kind of uh, crassy i suppose that you're going to be playing as there's a bunch of different roles that give you different abilities uh, in the game and then of course you're going to have cards like this it tells you how you're going to be able to win the game so it shows you down here based on the number of players how you're going to win so at 10 players you need 130 resources and uh that's for 10 seats for one seat, you need 40 resources. So if you're trying to get everybody on board the ship and you have four players, you're going to want 70 resources in this box. Otherwise, you're doomed. This is the rule book for the game. These are the bags. It's going to include uh, influence as well as resources. And then a 15 minute timer that you're going to turn over when you want to start the game. When the game is over, it's going to be simply turned flipped. Uh, it's going to have all the, basically all the sand is going to run out and that's going to end the game. And additionally, you're going to get event cards in this event deck. They're going to be basically white and black. Black will be face down in front of you and they'll be hidden. They're special. And white will be red instantly. They do some kind of effect like, for instance, grave mix calculations. This one allows you to flip the hourglass whenever you draw it. And that's pretty much what you're going to get in the game. The box, the rules, all these things you see here, and uh, that's it. All right, so let's come up and, or go down, I should say, and set it up for a game, and I will show you how a round or two works. So here's where Doom all set up for four players. And as you can see, I've got one, two, three, and four. Uh, and it tells you based on the number of players. This is a four plus player game. So you'll add the four plus player game cards or boards there. And you're also gonna put them on these little stands here. So they're gonna be standing up so you can actually hide resources behind them if you need to. But in general, resources are played in front of you unless a card says otherwise. For the other games modes, for more players, six players, seven, eight, nine, and 10, you'll add these cards here. Otherwise, you're going to set them aside and not use them along with the extra standees. This is the rule book for the game, tells you how to play, and it's very simple. And then you're gonna have the player reference, which is a front and back here. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it just like this. We won't need these either. I've got my resources and I've got my influence ready to go. I've got my deck that I did not shuffle, and I've went ahead and taken this little sand timer here. To begin the game, you're simply gonna turn the sand timer over and choose a player to start. And this player will just be random. The theocracy will go ahead and start. On your turn, you're gonna go ahead 
can choose any of these actions. And I'll tell you, produce, indoctrinate, propagandize, invade, and nuke. To produce, you simply take two resources from the white bag and put them in front of you. Indoctrinize, or you're going to indoctrinate, you're going to go ahead and take one influence and place it in front of you. And then propagandize, invade, and nuke do certain things at a cost. Propagandize makes, lets you steal one. And uh, for this specific character, it's actually free, but in general, it will cost resources. And then, uh, or it costs, sorry, it'll, you steal one influence from a player, that one's for free. But this one over here, it's going to spend one resource to take one influence. So that one will usually cost a resource. Invade is spend one influence to steal two resources from a player. And then nuking is going to cost eight, unless you're uh, another character like this one here, which uh, is going to nuke for five as opposed to eight. So everybody has their own unique special ability on these cards here. But you're going to choose one of those things and pass. After you've chosen and passed, all the way around the table, it's going to go back to the player who began. When that happens, everybody's going to put resources into the project that they choose. They're going to set up a number for their fingers. I put in two or I put in one. And whoever has the most is the one that's going to get this token. If there's a tie, you're simply going to vote unanimously on a player and they are going to take one influence from the bag and draw an event card. If the event card is white, you're simply going to read it out loud and do it. And if the event card is black, you're going to put it face down in front of you and use it when you want, or it'll tell you something specific to do by placing it in front of another player, etc., etc. After they're used, they get discarded, and you can put them at the bottom of the deck at the end of the game. And that is basically the idea. After that, this thing is probably going to switch to the person who played the most or was voted, and that player will begin, and it'll go all the way around again. When the sand timer runs out, you'll add up all the resources in the project, and based on the amount of resources in the project is how many seats you're going to get on the, uh, on the spaceship. The people who have the most influence are going to go on first, and the people who have the least will go on last. And if you have enough seats, everyone goes on. If you don't, it'll be based on the people who have the most influence in the game. All right, so let's go ahead and start around. So we'll flip over this timer here. We're going to start with this player here, and he's going to go ahead and produce, and you'll be taking these two bags together. He's going to take two resources and put them in front of him. The next player is like, I'm also going to produce. And this player, I'm also going to produce. And uh, this player over here will produce as well. Produce is usually the main action in the game. At that point, everybody's had their turn and people can put in as much resources as they want. He's going to put in two and he's going to put in one. He will put in one and he will put in one as well. This player was one that won't put the most resources in, so he's going to keep that and he's going to draw this card and read it. If it is a white one, like I said, he reads it out loud. One player of your choice must lose six of their tokens. The players next to them each lose two. And in this case, if he chose red, all of these guys are going to lose resources. But if he's working together with other players, he might choose this one. He might choose this player here because then it's going to be less tokens that are lost. Lost tokens simply go back into their bag. Then, beginning again, Autocracy is going to go ahead and produce. Now, Theocracy, he can actually indoctrinate for two. So he's going to go ahead and take two influence as opposed to just one. But remember, when you take influence in this game, you're going to be able to get on the seats, but it's also meaning that you're not producing, which makes people a little bit more worried about whether they want to keep you in the game as we're continuing. Uh, this player here, he's going to go ahead and take two, and then this player here will take two as well. And then once again, we go back to bidding. This player will bid two, this player will bid nothing, he'll bid nothing, and he will bid two. In this case, everybody's going to vote on a player, and let's say that they all vote for green over here. Green's going to get this here. Now, also don't forget, when you vote on somebody, they're going to get actually an influence. So in this case, he would get an influence, and he's going to get to draw a card. Uh, power drain. This one says the immense power drain from the project has left your civilization without the means to produce. Will you scavenge parts from the project to upgrade your power grid? Choose one. You can destroy 15 resources in here, or you may not produce for the rest of the game and keep this card face up. So it gives you a nasty choice. Do you want to make a huge sacrifice, or would you like to uh, place this in front of you and make it so you can't produce anymore, which might make people want to get rid of you? So he'll go ahead and choose two places in front of him, which means he can no longer choose the produce action. And that's basically the idea. I'll start with him again. We'll keep going around the board. People will continue putting resources in. At the end of the game, you're going to count all the resources up in here, add the seats, determine who has the most influence, and go from first to last. Players who make it on win, players who don't, are going to explode to the planet in the game. We're doomed. The game of global panic. All right, let's come up, and I'll discuss the game a little bit and give you what I think about it. All right, so let's discuss a little bit more about we're doomed as far as the event 
current cards go. Now, like I said, when the game is over, all the cards that you play go under the deck and you don't actually shuffle, which changes the game every time. Make sure you don't get the same cards over and over again. It kind of gives this unique, interesting aspect. You can shuffle. I don't see why you couldn't, but you don't have to. Let's talk about some of the cards now. Uh, so first of all, you're going to have stuff like uh, United Unified Front. All players must unanimously select one player to take all the influence. So in the game, basically what's going to happen is players are going to kind of work together as much as they can but the, the game itself is working against you and forcing you to be mean to each other specifically with these event cards here as the event cards pop up they're gonna make you make selective choices that you probably wouldn't normally want to make giving everybody giving one person a bunch of influence is fine as long as you have enough resources but if you only have two seats it might cause one player who has no influence to want to nuke that player especially if that player has the ability to nuke for less than the normal amount so it gets that it is a cooperative game up until it isn't a cooperative game. Airtight Alibi. This one says if you ever are caught cheating, you can discard this card and not suffer any consequences. Now, I, it doesn't say in the rules that you can cheat, so I never knew you could cheat up until the point where I got this card. So does that mean when I get the card, I can cheat? Or, as long, and then, or I could cheat in general, but I lose the game if I cheat? I'm not exactly sure how some of the cards work in this deck. Deny everything. All players must now conceal their influence. They don't have to reveal how much they have. And when, So that's the card that says they can hide influence behind their thing. Now, this other card, bam, says flip the hourglass. Grave miscalculations. In a 10-player game, we played a 10-player game, believe it or not, uh, we got down to that little baby smidgen of sand, and then it made us flip, which made the game from 15 minutes to a half an hour. Now, normally speaking, the beginning of the game drawing this card, it wouldn't be so bad because the game instantly ends, and usually maybe one or nobody wins, and sometimes it works pretty good if it's halfway through a game or one-third of the way. But in a game that has 10 players, that has a lot of consequences. First of all, it increases the time limit to 15 minutes, and when the resources in the bags run out, you have to do other things that can you basically take from other players and whatnot, and it forces you to just be mean, even though you have enough resources to build the ship and escape, which is just a little weird, I suppose. Certain cards in this deck, they just do not work for me. Uh, Scorched Earth. You can discard this card when you invade a player to steal all of their resources instead of just two. That's a really cool. It's uh, There's certain cards that kind of change the abilities you have. I really like the face down black cards, and even the ones that make you do certain things, like sing a national anthem for your... They basically make you waste time. So I had to sing my national anthem for my area, you would have to sing yours, and so on and so forth. After that's all done, you can discard the card, which in turn reduces the amount of time in the sand, not allowing you to gain resources. Uh, so that there's a lot of great cards in the game, and there's a big stack of them that is definitely going to change the game no matter how you're playing it, especially with different players. The game does, does play differently with four to ten players. It will change what you want to do and how you want to do it, and generally not going to give you enough seats. When you play the first game, in my opinion, you're gonna have to make sure everybody really understands the rules so there can be some confusion because for instance if somebody's stalling you have to say that you have to count down from 10 all the way to zero and they just lose their turn or they can get eliminated um there's certain things like that that just like don't it, it's kind of like you have to play that first game to understand it and then the second game things go really well my experience with we're doomed is an interesting one because half the time this game is amazing totally fun edge of your seat you're worried if you're gonna win you're worried if you're gonna lose if you have to eliminate somebody or not sometimes your complete role changes in which now you have to steal resources from the bin and now you're the bad guy and people have to try and eliminate you and you have to try and stop them by pulling resources from them all that kind of stuff super super tight super good the hourglass all the components are very nice the artwork that is there is good and honestly it's not needed which is kind of nice too it, it just kind of would add to the confusion I like how it's very straightforward, trying to get all the resources you can before it's too late. But like I said, there's just a few things that can change the game to the point where you're like, oh, I got 15 more minutes and now we don't have any more resources in the bag. I wish there would just been more resources in the bag to the point where you can just keep putting them in because that had to be a lot more fun. With 10 players, it can have those problems. And with like four players, it can also have weird problems. Like one player gets eliminated in a four player game, there's three players left now. Then you draw a card that says two people have to be eliminated and one person can be brought back, which makes then a two player game. So then you're going to have have people sitting out for 10 or even 15 minutes if it, or 14 minutes if it's the start of the game there's certain little things like that but above those nitpicks this game is a lot of fun it's really interactive and really really engaging the dexterity is there oddly enough in this game that you wouldn't think has dexterity as far as taking the bags and moving around and yelling at people as long as you don't mind a little bit of mischief a little bit of fun when it comes to kind of pushing your uh, opponents out of the ability to get the seats noticing when players are taking that influence instead of donating to the kitty like they should 
should be. Everybody should be donating until they aren't, and then you have to deal with them in some way. There's a lot of political nature in the game too. You have to be like socially interactive with players, saying this player is taking way too much influence. They're not donating enough resources, and they're gonna, or, or this player is saving up too many resources and not putting them in the box, which means they're probably likely going to try and nuke somebody. We have to stop that guy or deal with him in some way. And it has all that ups and downs. It's fun. It's crazy. And because of all that, it has those negative side effects to the game. But after you've gotten used to it and you understand how it works, I would just suggest taking out certain things. Like I probably will never use the get card grave miscalculations again, especially in a larger player game, because it has that opportunity to flip it and give us another 15 minutes when everything's empty and we're kind of just sitting around and there's a couple other little ones that are just like ah, i don't want to do that i think what would actually change the game just enough to where i would have all the cards in it is if everybody had a veto token and they can veto a card that is read out loud if they don't like it it gives and then they have to draw a new card it gives people a little more autonomy and it also gives people the feeling that they are a nation state and they have a little bit of power as to what goes on and what doesn't but then after that they have to suffer whatever repercussions so flipping hourglass at the very end no, no big deal now because everybody chose to use their tokens on other cards, thusly you have to suffer that card, gives you that choice. Anyway, overall though, We're Doomed is a really, really fun game. If you like games that are a little dexterous, a, a lot social, and it's a cooperative game that has the um, elimination aspect and the non-cooperative nature, I think you'll dig this one. It's a unique one, definitely take a look down below in the description and buy We're Doomed if it sounds like something for you. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go check out our star videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to take a look at We're Doomed. It's definitely a unique game for those of you who want a party game. It plays up to 10 players, which is really cool. I like that aspect of the game. And also, if you're interested, Patreon. I'm doing a Patreon right now. For the most part, it happens to be working towards the live streamers, uh, that we do our giveaways every Wednesday, as well as a live stream playing games just like this 7 30 p.m pst on facebook every wednesday you can take a look down below in the description if you like that stuff join us and win some games patreon is going to basically give you bonus entries additional youtube content which is just for them series that involve things like mechanics and balance and all that cool stuff if you're interested in learning more about the in-depth processes of maybe board game design and whatnot maybe you'll be interested in in donating to that but we do greatly appreciate it as well as going to check out my friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek tons of great giveaways and great content as well even more than my own site all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to hopefully not being doomed <laughs>